No silver, no gold. In our last story, the Holy Spirit descended on the disciples like a whirlwind. The strength and authority of Jesus was poured out on the disciples as they proclaimed the glory of Christ. Thousands were added to the church that day, and the movement of Christ's family began. Now we see glimpses of Jesus in the way Peter and John teach and heal the people around them. Seeing that the disciples were becoming more like Jesus every day, the priests and elders feared that they would have another problem on their hands, inspired by the book of Acts. Jack Graham here with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. In our last episode, we heard how the disciples and others were given the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. As they gathered in the temple with Jews from all over the world, a rushing wind came and tongues of fire descended upon them. These are symbols of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. They began to speak God's truth in other languages so that the people could understand the gospel. Peter then spoke to the crowd and delivered a message that cut to people's hearts and over 3,000 repented of their sin and received Christ that day, and the church was birthed. Today we'll hear as Peter and John began to boldly, courageously carry out the mission of Jesus, preaching and healing with wisdom and power that clearly was not of themselves, but was in the power of the resurrection, the power of Jesus himself. They will soon face opposition for their message that threatens the power of the religious elite, just as it happened to Jesus. So, let's listen now to today's reading from God's Word. The lame beggar watched as dozens of people passed by him to enter into the synagogue. It was the hour of prayer, and many devoted men and women entered into the house of God to pray and seek him. It was a fruitful time for the lame beggar. He would lay beside the gate called Beautiful and ask for spare coins. Since people felt charitable before praying, he would often make most of his money in that time. The man raised his cup and shook it, waiting for coins to trickle in. The lame man saw two men walking side by side into the gate. Spare some coin for a poor lame man, he asked. The two men looked at him. The taller and older one knelt down and looked him deeply in the eye. He smiled and held out his hands. Gold and silver I do not have he said. But what I have, I can give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. Then all of a sudden, the lame man felt a warm sensation travel from his toes up his spine. He looked down to his feet and moved them. His eyes began to water with tears, and he rose to his feet. He hugged the two men. They were none other than John and Peter. The people stopped to stare at the man who was jumping up and down. They knew him to be the lame beggar and were astonished to see him leaping in front of the gate. Dozens of people gathered to see. So Peter and John took the opportunity to share with them the power and the story of Jesus. Since the man was lame from birth, he clung to Peter and John for balance. Peter then spoke to the whole crowd, saying, Do not look at us as if we are the ones who made him walk. Look at us. We are not special. It is Jesus who performs these deeds. The one who you all allowed to be crucified is the one who works these mighty things, Peter declared the gospel to the crowds. He spoke of repentance, forgiveness, and purpose. Many more people were added to the family of God that day, including the lame beggar, who now walked with purpose under the will of God. As they were speaking, an old enemy emerged from the synagogue doors, The priests, the captain of the guard, and the Sadducees walked out to see a large group of people surrounding Peter and John. Their stomachs dropped as they watched 5,000 men and women declare faith in the resurrected Jesus, the Jesus they killed. The next day, Peter and John were preaching again in the city streets. Caiaphas, the high priest, came with his guard and yelled, "'By what power or authority do you do these things?' The high priest was livid, since Peter and John had been healing and preaching among the people. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, stepped down and walked to the priests and his guards. Are we being threatened because we have done good deeds? Peter asked. I want it to be perfectly clear. I do these things with the authority of Jesus, the one you crucified. He is the cornerstone by which we build our lives. There is no one else we look to for salvation. 
Peter did not flinch. He spoke with boldness. Caiaphas had seen this boldness before in Jesus. It sent chills down his spine. Out of fear, they asked them to leave the temple streets and not to speak the name of Jesus. Of course, they refused, but the priests could not do anything, for the masses were in love with the disciples. In our scripture today, we find a man sitting at a gate near the entrance of the temple. The gate was called beautiful, but for this crippled man, life was anything but beautiful. He could not provide for his own needs, and he was surely considered cursed by those around him. All he could do was beg for spare change and hope for generous strangers to give him a coin or two. So as Peter and John passed by, he looked at them, hoping they would take pity on him and give him something. These men are now walking in the power of Jesus Christ. Filled with the Spirit, Peter and John looked upon this man with love and compassion. They were like Jesus. They were full of Jesus. And Peter and John knew that this man needed more than physical healing. He needed spiritual healing. Peter looked at him with kindness. But rather than drop just a few coins in the beggar's cup, he healed the man in the name of Jesus Christ. This man is now on his feet walking and praising God. Can you imagine the joy of experiencing the power of Christ and the healing of his body? Of course, this would cause quite a scene. Those nearby who had seen the man probably many times unable to walk, and now he was jumping around and smiling and praising God. He's talking about Jesus and what Jesus had done for him. Peter and John knew this was an opportunity to share a much deeper healing, so they began to share the good news. These two fishermen were not trained speakers, and they were certainly not scholars, but God was in them. The Holy Spirit was filling them, and the Lord gave them the words to say. Just as Peter had done on the day of Pentecost, he began to tell everyone of the love of Jesus and how Jesus was sent by God and even though people rejected him, his own people rejected him and sent him to a cross, that Christ rose again, and now the resurrection power of Christ was alive in them and available to all who would trust in Christ. He called them to repentance, to turn from their sins and receive the grace of God. His words were clear and compelling and courageous, and once more, they were convicting. They cut to the heart. 5,000 more souls were saved that day, and the church continued to grow with explosive, multiplying growth. Of course, the religious leaders hated this. They imagined that Jesus' followers would just fade away with time, but now the opposite is happening. So they had Peter and John arrested and brought them before the council of priests and scribes the next day. They tried to intimidate these two men, these two disciples, but these men were full of God, and they were full of boldness and courage. Peter and John, even under custody of the officials, did not stop preaching the gospel of Christ. They knew the power of Jesus was in them, and so they fearlessly carried out the mission of our Lord. The religious leaders had no basis to keep them confined. After all, they had simply done a good deed and healed a lame man. And still, they warned them to stop preaching. And I just absolutely love Peter and John's response given to us in Acts 4, verses 19 and 20. Listen to these words. Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. In other words, we're going to obey God and not you. We are compelled to keep speaking about Jesus. We should pray for that same boldness today as we share the gospel with others. We cannot help but speak of what Christ has done for us. And if we have experienced the love and grace of Jesus, we are compelled to tell others. Just like Peter and John and so many others, we don't need to be eloquent or educated to share the good news of Christ. We need to be prepared and know the gospel, but then really simply to be willing and obedient and trust God that in the power of the Holy Spirit, he would change lives through our bold witness. Dear God, we thank you for the courageous example of Peter and John. Help us to look for opportunities to see people all around us who need the hope and help that is in Jesus Christ. 
May we boldly share the good news of Jesus Christ with the people we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. This is Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. I want to encourage you to download the Pray.com app and make prayer and Bible study discipleship a priority in your life. Put Jesus first in your life and watch what he can do when you give your life to him. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love because by inviting others to join us on this journey through the Bible, many will meet the Lord and experience his power in their lives. I also want to encourage you to join my wife Deb and I on a trip to Israel, April 1st through the 10th, 2024. This is an amazing opportunity to walk where Jesus walked and to experience the Bible at a new level. When we tour Israel, we don't just see sights, but we worship, we pray, we hear the Bible taught, and it's my privilege to lead this tour and to teach God's Word as we go. So we would love to have you. And then also, there's a trip coming up July 6th through 13th of 2024 also to Alaska, an Alaskan adventure. And this also is an opportunity for us to be together as Christians, to enjoy great fellowship, to see one of the most beautiful places in all the world, and that is Alaska, to see the wonders of God and to worship Him, to study the Bible together, and to see all the great sights around. So again, Israel is April the 1st through the 10th, 2024, and Alaska is July the 6th through the 13th. You can go to jackgraham.org for information or to prestonwood.org slash Israel. We would love to have you, so check it out. And if you want more resources on how to tap into God's power for your life, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.